today. Our topic for today is about your life online. We are social beings. By nature, human are social beings. We need to share our ideas, express our opinions, and make connections with other people. Some people are content with asking questions while others are happy to share what they know and to be recognized as a reliable source of information or advice. Before the digital age, you have to be published in a newspaper, magazines, or book to disseminate your knowledge or opinions or creative talents to the masses. But today, there are numerous ways to share what you know with the public at large. It is of course up to the public to decide whether to avail themselves of what you have shared. Before I may proceed with this discussion, I just want to reiterate the lesson objectives. In this lesson, you will learn about uh, your online identity and how to protect, protect it. You will also learn about the adverse effects prolonged computing can have on your health. Upon completion of this lesson, you should be able to describe the purpose of blogs, forums, and wikis. Understand the functions of social media networks and how they work. Understand the difference between open and social and open and closed social networks. Describe how to use LinkedIn. Describe what constitutes your digital identity. Understand the importance of maintaining a good digital identity. Explain how to avoid cyberbullying. Understand the health risk that arise from prolonged computing. Blogs are online journals that include a communication element. Generally, the blog creator publishes or posts an article about a specific topic and others can then post comments in response. Blogs can also include links to other people's blog. Blogs are a way of publishing your own work and like any published author, the more readers you have, the more success for your blog is considered to be. If you create and regularly update a blog, and if you can generate and maintain sufficient traffic, that is people keeping coming to read your post, you can become recognized as an authority on your popular or particular subject. If you include links to other people's blog and they include links back to your blog, these links are called trackbacks. You further validate yourself as an authority on your subject matter. To create a blog, you simply navigate to a blog site and create an account. Most sites include templates that enable you to start posting articles immediately. To post an article to your blog, you must sign in using the username and password you select when you create the account. You can also send a link to your blog to other users. Several blog sites you can visit to create your own blog are the following Blogger or www.blogger.com, WordPress.com, Tumblr.com, Sangha.com, Weebly.com. Blogs can contain a lot of reliable information on a variety of subjects and they are searchable. And today, we are now using YouTube for blogging. Forums. Forums are online discussion sites, also called discussion boards. Laid out in a question and answer format, people on the forum hold conversation in the form of posted messages. A forum is organized into categories, and each forum category is divided into topics or threads. So under the topics, each discussion in the specific forum is listed. Click a category to view the topics, then click a topic to view the discussion. If you join a forum, you can post a question and wait for knowledgeable users to respond. Popular forums include answers.microsoft.com, discussion about Microsoft products and Windows software, www.cnet.com slash forums, forums on hardware, software, mobile, devices, and more, www techrepublic.com forums, a community of IT experts answer questions and share their knowledge. 
www.pctechbytes.com slash forums, computer repair tips and instruction, www.w7forums.com, discussions, news and articles on installation, drivers, hardware, and troubleshooting windows. So, as I mentioned earlier, this will be the popular forums. Answer.microsoft.com, CNET.com, TechRepublic.com, PCTechBite.com, and W7Forums.com. A wiki is a reference resource that is developed through the collaborative efforts of anyone who wants to contribute. Wiki pages are hosted on a web server and managed through wiki software which allow users to freely create and edit web page content using a web browser. These pages in a wiki are hyperlinked to one another. Wikis are powerful because multiple people can and usually do collaborate on a single piece of content. Let's call it an article. A single article could have one author or many authors. A wiki pulls together the knowledge from each contributors to create the best possible collection of information. Because wikis are hosted online, you use a search box to find information. And because the pages are linked, you can jump from one article to several other articles. Editing and content creation occurs continuously, making it possible to find information on current topics. The efforts of the wiki community at large tends to, the, to ensure that articles are accurate, if there are points in question, this will often be marked on that page in needing citation or supporting evidence. There are wikis devoted to entertainment, games, health, reference articles, travel, and more. There are even fandom wikis, of course, created and maintained by the fan based on particular movies and television shows. And there are wikis about wikis. You can find information about almost any topic in a wiki article somewhere on the web. Social Media Networks A social media network is the dedicated website that enables users to communicate with one another. Users can post information, comment on other posts or other people's posts, upload pictures and videos, play games, send email messages, or engage in online chat with one another. You can join a social media site to connect with people like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Tumblr, Instagram, Flickr, YouTube, and Vine are just a few examples of popular social media sites. The following figure shows pages from Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. You must create an account on social media site before you can use it. Users who are under the age of 13 may need a parent's permission to create an account. When you join a site, you create a profile. A profile is a collection of information about you. It usually includes your name, your picture, a list of your interests and hobbies, and perhaps general information about where you live. Once you create a profile on a social media site, the site creates a page for you, and you can then post pictures, video, or text about yourself on your page. Building the network Once your page has been created, you then go about the task of inviting other people to connect with you on the social media platform. Depending on the site you are using, these people may be called friends or contacts or connections. The terminology is not important. The important point is, these are the people who constitute your social network. A social network is a network of people, people you know, and people who know people that you know. The power of social networking is that your current friends can lead you to, the, to new friends. Friends and friends request. You invite people you know to be your friends on the site. Friends can see your page and your information. Anything you post on your page can be seen by all your friends unless you take extra steps to share certain items with only selected friends. You will probably also receive friend requests from other people who have their own pages on the site. 
a friend request is an invitation to become online friends. When you accept a friend request, you can vi then visit your friends' pages. And while you are there, you can see all of their friends and see friend requests to these people as well. As a matter of personal safety, you should accept friend requests only from people you know. On some sites, you might consider asking a friend to introduce you to someone with whom you want to connect. Why do people join social networks? People join social media networks for a variety of reasons. To find old friends, or keep in touch with current friends, or to find new friends too. Some people join professional social media sites to expand their list of business contacts, to promote themselves, to advertise their particular skill sets, to look for job leads, or to find people to fill open positions. Companies often create social media pages as a means of advertising upcoming events, to post job post opening, or and to promote brand awareness. Open social networks include blog, photo, message in chat features, and some people use social networking platforms as a way to collaborate with others. Popular social media networks. There are several types of social networks geared for specific purposes and for sharing different types of content. A few of the most popular are listed here. So Facebook, designed to help people connect and stay connected. Facebook is perhaps the most popular social networking site in the world. The site is available in 17 languages and includes public features such as a classified ads board, groups, events, and personal web pages for each member. LinkedIn A social network for professionals to post information about their job skills, interest, education, and work history. Users can search for jobs, search for the people with the specific skills, and join groups devoted to specific professions. Twitter An online microblogging network that allows members to broadcast short posts called tweets. Registered users can post and read, while unregistered users can only read. To share a tweet that you like, you can retweet or repost it to share with your followers. Instagram a network for sharing photos in short, up to 60 seconds videos. Users can also apply digital filters to their images. Snapchat A mobile app that allows you to send pictures and video called snaps to friends. However, the pictures and video last for only a brief time and then disappear shortly after being viewed. You can add snaps to your story, story which, in a, which is a collection of your photos and videos which will last for 24 hours. You can also add captions, doodles, or lens graphic over the top of a snap. YouTube A video sharing networks. User can upload, view, rate, share, and comments on videos. You can find video clips, TV clips, music videos, movie trailers, and video blogs on YouTube. Most of the content is uploaded by individuals, but advertisers and media corporations also upload material there. Unregistered users can watch videos and registered videos and use uh, and registered users can create their own channels and upload videos to those channels. Users can also subscribe to channels and receive notification when new content has been added. Vine a video sharing network that allows you to record and share videos that are up to 6 seconds long. Other users can like, comment, or rebind, which means they add someone else's video to their own timeline for their followers to see. Open and close, uh, open versus closed social media networks. The social media networks you are probably best acquainted with are open networks, that is, they are open to the general public. You simply need to create an account. Most require only a valid email address for sign up. And there is a generally a minimum age requirement. So for example, you must be 13 or older to open a Facebook account. Enterprises and organizations, however, which open enforce policies that discourage the use of open social media networks while employees are at work. 
can benefit from implementing closed social networks. A closed social network is a social network that is private and internal to a company or organization. In order to participate on a closed social network, you must have an account that is associated with your organization and usually you use your work email address to sign in. Closed social networking services can be used for private communication and collaboration within a school or organizations. Advantage of or advantages of closed networks. Closed social media networks allow businesses to harness and leverage the power of social networking. They include message boards, news feeds, share file location, search capability, and more. They provide a central location for discussions, announcements, wikis, and file storage. Instead of emailing file attachments to each other, employees can access documents in a secure, central location for collaborative efforts. Perhaps, even more importantly, Closed networks provide an opportunity in a platform for all employees to participate in company, happenings, and conversation. Previously, this privilege was limited to managers and executives, but now long-time employees and new hires alike can immerse themselves in the culture of an organization, find documents and information on their own, and stay tuned in to what is going on company-wide. So, the benefits to very large corporations can be profound. Person, ed person education, for example, team with Jive software to create NEO, a closed social network that connects over 30,000 employees in over 60 countries. Yammer, which is integrated with Office 365, is a closed social network that provides a dedicated site where employers can share documents, collaborate on documents, follow colleagues' projects, and follow company-specific news feed. Yammer also allows for the creation of groups, which also you to join and participate in specific project teams or department teams. Mobile apps for Yammer allows you to stay connected whenever you are, and you can set up desktop notification so that you never miss an update. For file storage, Yammer is integrated with OneDrive for business and SharePoint. Stack or Slack. Slack is another widely used closed social media network. It is a cloud-based team collaboration tool that is designed to replace email as the preferred method of intra-company communication. Slack provides messaging notification and announcement services, support team collaboration in integrated file storage with Google Drive. Closed social media networking allows employees to stay informed about things that are happening within the company, make it very easy to disseminate information and reduce inbox clutter instead of having to send an email announcement to all your employees. You can post an announcement to Yammer or Slack and everyone is notified. This makes users and IT departments happy. Take note that Facebook began as a closed network. Its membership was originally limited to Harvard University students. Membership was later expanded first to other colleges in Boston area, then to schools in the Ivy League, then to most universities in Canada and the United States, then to corporations, and then finally to the public. Taking a look at LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a social network of professional connections. You might think of it as an online resume or a job board, but it is so much more. The purpose of LinkedIn is to be visible, searchable, and findable. It is a platform on which you can get your name, talents, and abilities in front of people who are looking to hire or to contact or contract. On LinkedIn, people in your network are called connections. When your connections look at your profile, they can see your information. They can see how they are connected to you, and they can see whether you have any connections or other characteristics in common. Your network is made up of first degree, second degree, and third degree connections, and members of any LinkedIn group that you have joined. So, we have the first degree, 
These are people you directly connected to either because you have accepted their invitation to connect or because they have accepted your invitation. You can contact them by sending a message on LinkedIn. Second degree. These are people who are connected to your first degree connection. You can send them an invitation to connect. Third degree. These are people who are connected to your second degree connections. Each person's degree of connective, co connectedness to you is presented by an icon that display next to their name in search results, pages, and on their profiles. To see your second degree connection, you can access one of the first degree connections profile, then view their contacts. When you click the name of the second degree connection, LinkedIn will show how you are connected. You can also use an advanced link in search and specify to show second and third degree connections. Creating a LinkedIn account. To create an account on LinkedIn, go to www.linkedin.com and click the Join Now link. Enter your first and last name, email address, and desired password, then click the Join Now button. The email address that you specify will be your LinkedIn sign-in. A wizard walk you through setting up your account. The first three pages are about you, your job, and your job field. You will have an opportunity to import your contacts from your email account, upload a photo of yourself to add to your profile, and select various channels to follow. Channels are news feed on specific topics that you can subscribe to. You can add a phone number to receive text messages and you are encouraged to download the mobile app. You will receive an email asking you to confirm your email address and this is important because your LinkedIn profile is tied to your email address. Click the link in the email message to confirm your address and your account will be set up. As soon as your account is created, you can start building your profile. By default, your profile page shows your name and your current job title. Tip boxes may display on the screen to point out various tools and section. To upload a photo at your LinkedIn profile, click Add a photo to open the Edit Photo dialog box. In the Edit Photo dialog box, click Choose File to open the, the Open dialog box. Navigate to a Save Photo and double-click it to upload it. You can then preview how the photo will appear. Drag the yellow square to change the position and size of your photo. The arrows below. Your pictures allow you to rotate the pictures right or left. When you are satisfied with the appearance of your picture, click Save. The photo is saved to your profile. When you build your profile, you structure it like a highly detailed resume. There are sections of work experience, education, volunteer work, certifications, courses, voluntary experiences, awards, and other work-related information. As you point the mouse cursor over various fields, they will display an edit icon. Click the edit icon to open the field for editing. Enter the relevant information, then click Save. So, editable fields in the top section of your profile include Photo Point the mouse pointer over your photo and then click Change Photo to edit or delete the current photo. Name, you can edit your first, last, and former names. Headline, this information defaults to your current job title, but you can change it. If your headline is the same as your current position, the current position will display in the top sections of your profile. Location, open the field for editing and enter your postal code. Industry. Open the field for editing and click the drop-down arrow to select from a list of in industries. Current employer. Clicking the edit icon will take you to the experience sections of your profile where you can edit company name, job title, descriptions, and dates of employment. Previous employer. Clicking the edit icon will take you to experience section of your profile where you can edit company name, job title, Description in Dates of Employment Public Profile URL This is the URL for your LinkedIn page. You can add this URL to your email signature and to your business cards and website to make it easy for people to connect with you on LinkedIn. You can customize the last section of your URL. 
by clicking the settings icon to use to access your profile public profile then click the edit icon next to your url type the last part of your new custom url and then click save contact info click the contact info link to access contact information fields you can change your email address add an im name address a phone number, a street address, your Twitter handle, and your website URL. Inviting connections. When you are first starting to build your LinkedIn network, LinkedIn may suggest people you want to connect with based on the company and school information you add to your profile. LinkedIn will suggest your co-workers, for example, or alumni from your university. Suggestions display on the people you may know page. Click the connect button that appears under a person's name to send a connection invitation. To invite specific people for whom you have an email address, click my network, then click add contacts. On the add contacts page, click the invite by email button to open an invitation profile. Type in the addresses of people you want to invite. Then, click Send Invitations. Additionally, you can invite people to connect from a member's profile. Click the Connect button on his or her profile page. Search results. Click Connect to the right of the person's information. Managing your digital identity. Have you ever typed your name into the Google search engine to see what you can find? Any information you see in the result page is part of your digital identity. A digital identity is a collection of data about you that is available online. In most cases, your digital identity is combination of your online profile or profiles and also your posting and all your uploads and all your images and all your likes and all of the people you follow. In other words, it includes a history of all your digital activity. If you have published books or website content, that will also be included. Digital footprints. Anytime you perform an action online, such as posting to your blog, or tweeting about a great new sandwich shop, or liking a friend's post on Facebook, you leave a trace of information about yourself, about your personality, about your character. These traces of information are digital footprints. They are a permanent record of the steps you have taken throughout your online life. Because they are online, they are searchable, other people can find and follow your digital footprints. Social media and the modern internet enable us to communicate in ways that were previously unimaginable. Using just a smartphone, you can broadcast when something happens and even upload a video. You can publish to a worldwide audience with a single tap on a touch screen. However, this ability is a double-edged sword. Online is forever. So in online, my forever. It is important to keep in mind that once you make an online post or upload a picture or video or even send an email or a text, you are no longer in control of that information. Anyone who can see your post or picture or video can download it and keep it or share it. For the most part, this is a good thing. It is what gives social media its power. Information is shared and the number of people who see it grows exponentially. But this is same power gives permanence to post things, but both the ones that you are proud of and the ones that you might prefer to forget. Suppose, for example, you post a picture of yourself getting drunk at a fraternity party on your Facebook page. Everyone laughs and all is well. After college, you have a job interview with a prestigious company and realize that photo might not reflect well on you if someone at the company were to visit your page. So you go to your Facebook page and remove that photo. But what happens if a few of your Pratt buddies share the photos on their own pages? And suppose they tag you in that photo that they shared on their pages. This photo of you are still out there tagged with your name and potentially anyone can find them. Consider another scenario. You send a confidential email message meant for my eyes only. 
complaining about your boss because he is threatening you unfairly or treating you unfairly. It made you feel better to rant a little bit and send a back a message of encouragement. Then the situation improves and you and your boss become friends. All is good. However, there is really nothing stopping me from sharing the email messages with other people or even with your boss at some later time, especially if our friendship ends for some reason. The control of the message is out of your hands. Even if I remain a good friend, what would happen if someone hacked my email account and found your message? Now, the message is out of your hands and out of my hands, and the hacker can do with it what he likes. Maybe he will post it online for a laugh. You should understand that anything you put into digital format and then send to other people is out of your control forever. If it is something that might reflect poorly on your character, it could potentially be used as weapon against you. Be mindful of this whenever you send or post digital information. Creating a positive online identity. Create and manage your LinkedIn account. Manage your Facebook profile and remove any photos that do not show you in the professional light. Create a Twitter account and use it to share information that others may find valuable, such as articles related to your business or industry, or upcoming volunteers' events in your community. Create a post to a blog that shares positive and professional ideas. Before indiscriminately posting the first thing that pops into your mind, ask yourself about sharing insecurity. Never post or send the communication in anger. Why is your digital identity important? As time you post something online, you are disseminating your message to the world, and by extension, you are promoting your personal brand. Your personal brand distinguishes you from other people and creates an impression in minds of potential customers or employers or admissions board panelists. It is a matter of perception. People who prefer to maintain both in personal and professional online identity often use the real name of one identity and an alias for the other. In some profiles, such as gaming profiles, you are encouraged or even required to use an alias so that you are not personally identifiable by your gaming name. If your blog is about your profession, post articles that show others how to accomplish their goals or streamline a process that shows others how to accomplish their goals or streamline a process, share videos that shows you're participating in volunteer and community projects. Online behavior. Who do you know online? If, you're, if you create social media, chat, email, and gaming account, your first online friends are usually family members, people you know from work and neighborhood friends. Then after you spend some time online, you make other acquaintances. People who you know only online, think for a minute about how much you really know about them. Chances are, you don't know much except for their online names and how they act when they are online. The truth about online identities is that they can be anonymous. For many people, this anonymity makes them feel free to behave in ways they normally wouldn't in face-to-face -face communication. Some people are less shy online that they are in face-to-face -face situation. Others more readily express their anger or feel free to be rude to others. The idea that no one knows who you really are can be a powerful thing. No matter how anonymous you may feel while you are online, Remember that each of us has a moral and ethical responsibility to treat others with respect. Cyberbullying Remember that there is a flesh and blood person behind each online identity. A real person who can feel as hurt, threatened, or picked on online as he or she would in a face-to-face -face encounter. In the past, a bully had to physically confront a victim in order to target him or her. Today, 
our connected online world has given bullies a whole new arena for targeting victims. Online or cyber bullying can take place around the clock through email, social media, instant messaging, text messaging, and so on. Cell phones and social media are the most commonly used mediums in which cyber bullying occurs. And because so many people are connected, bullying now occurs where potentially millions of others see it. The most common places where cyberbullying occurs are social media, short message service, instant messages, and email. Cyberbullying includes making online threats, using hate speech in social media or cell phone messages, spreading rumors, making, making mean hurtful comments, and taking embarrassing photographs without the knowledge or consent of the victim and then posting them. Bullying is not a harmless electronic action aimed at no one in particular. Bullying is targeted at real people and can cause real damage. Victims of cyberbullying are more likely to suffer from low self-esteem and to consider suicide. Cyberbullying can have serious consequences. So, what should you do if you are a victim of cyberbullying? Remember that it is not your fault. Ignore if you can, especially if the bullying is limited to teasing and minor name calling. Bullies are often encouraged by seeing a reaction. End all communications with a bully, if possible. For example, if you may be able to block his or her number so that you no longer receive calls or threats. Facebook and Facebook Messenger allow you to block other users so that they can no longer interact with you. Keep a hard copy record of bullying messages you receive. You may need this if things escalate and you need to prove that you did not cause trouble. Confide in a trusted adult if you are a minor or mentor or supervisor. Together, you may decide to report incidents to school or university officials or to police. To the police. What not to do? Avoid taking the following actions if you are the victim of cyberbullying. Do not respond in kind. Do not forward bullying contexts or messages. And do not believe the bully. Do not allow anyone to destroy your self-esteem. Computers in your health. For some people, computers are indis indispensable tools for leading a productive and entertainment-filled life. For others, however, they can cause a great deal of stress. They are new technology to people who are used to old world ways. We use computers way more than we used to. And even when we are not at your computers, some people are still connected and engaged. Coping with change. It is important to understand that as technology advances, the world changes. It does not change all at once, but it does change. For example, on June 12, 2009, full power broadcasting of analog television signals is the United States sees and all full power stations transmitted only digital TV signals from then on. The switchover had been announced and advertised for well over a year before it happened, and consumers were encouraged to purchase digital television adapters for their analog TV sets. The federal government also sponsored a DTV converted box coupon program to help consumers through the conversation. However, many people simply refused to buy a converter and emergency legislation was drafted to allow some station to continue broadcasting analog signals under September 1, 2015. The point is, if you refuse to change, you may be left behind. We live in an exciting time of groundbreaking advancement and it is important to approach new technology as a new opportunity rather than as an obstacle. Achieving digital literacy is important for anyone. Audience consideration. Even though new technology is available, not everyone is eager to jump on board. This is important to remember if you market items to demographic groups 
that either cannot afford new technology or that include members who might be resistant to new technology. In other words, consider your audience. If you want to market walk-in bathtubs or prepaid funeral plans to people aged 70 and older, you should make sure that you advertise on the radio and on televisions and in printed media as well as advertising online. Additionally, make sure that your staff, your company would leave operators to receive incoming calls. It would be ill-advised to expect people in this age group to apply online. If you want to advertise upcoming community events or special services, it is fine to advertise on your website or on Twitter. However, be sure to mail flyers to the community too or you might pass over quite a few people who would have been interested. Just because the community theater director is a genius at advertising on social media, that does not mean the community at large will be trolling the internet looking for announcements. Some people still need to see a flyer and hang it on their refrigerators. Disengaging While, con while connectedness makes our world smaller and allows us to be aware of what is happening anywhere at almost any time, Human beings also require time away from external stimuli. We need some time alone to simply be and to focus inward for a bit. That is, we require downtime. In order to maintain good mental health, it is unhealthy to be engaged 24 by 7. Internet addiction. Internet addiction is thought to be an impulse control disorder similar to pathological gambling. While it is common for people to enjoy using the internet to meet, socialize, and exchange ideas through chat rooms, chat rooms, social networking sites, and online communities, some form an intensive attachment to these activities and cannot pull themselves away. Some users spend endless hours online at the cost of damaging interpersonal relationship with the people in their lives. The warning signs of internet addictions are thinking continually about previous online activity or anticipating the next online session, using the internet in increasing amounts of time in order to achieve satisfaction, L losing interest in other habits or pastimes, being unsuccessful in trying to control, cut back or stop internet use, feeling restless, moody, depressed, or irritable when attempting to cut down on internet use, spending more time online than originally intended, suffering fatigue or experience a change in sleep habits, risking significant relationship, job educational or career opportunities because of internet use, lying to family members, therapists, or others about how much time you spend on the internet, and using the internet as a way to escape from problems or to relieve feelings of hopelessness, guilt, anxiety, or depression. Physical symptoms can include backache, headaches, weight gain or weight loss, disturbances in sleep, carpal tunnel syndrome, and blurred or stained strain vision. Internet addiction, like any other addiction, can cause personal, family, academic, financial, and occupational problems. Family members feel cheated and even insignificant when you would rather spend time online with strangers than with them. If you lie about how much time you really spend online, then distrust enters your relationships. In more extreme cases, internet addicts may create online personas through which they pretend to be people other than themselves. Those at high, high risk for creating these secret lives are those who suffer from low self-esteem or feelings of inadequacy. Inability to deal with these problems in real life lead to clinical problems of depression and anxiety. Ergonomic Best Practices Repetitive Stress Injuries or RSIs become commonplace as users begin to work on their computers for long periods of time. RSIs are common or conditions that occur gradually over time and are caused by too many uninterrupted repetitions of an activity or motions, particularly if the activity or motion is unnatural or awkward. 
RSIs for computer users usually affect the hands, wrist, and arms but can also affect other joints such as the elbow or neck. To combat RSIs, users can use ergonomically designed furniture and proper techniques for safely using the computer. Ergonomics is the science of designing equipment that maximizes safety and minimizes discomfort. Measures you can take to prevent RSIs when using your computer include Sit in a chair that provides lower back support Armrest and adjustable height Use an ergonomic keyboard which allows your hands to rest in a more natural position when you type than a standard keyboard dress. Tilt the monitor up about 10 degrees to prevent neck strain. Use a, use a padded wrist support to, su to support your wrist when you are not typing. To prevent To prevent eye strain or headaches, you can position your monitor from 24 to 30 inches away from your eyes, adjust the monitor resolution so text and icons are large enough to see clearly, ensure that the monitor does not flicker, the refresh rate should be at least 72 hertz, avoid staring at the display screen or long periods of time. The following reasons or the following are some other points to keep in mind when considering how to create and use a computer station. The work surface would be stable. Everything on the work surface should be resting flat. And the monitor and keyboard should be directly in front of you, not an angle. If you work in a computer for several hours a day, keep ergonomics in mind. First and foremost, never work at the computer without taking regular breaks. Get up once every hour, stretch and walk about to get the circulation going and to rest your eyes. Another uh, points to keep in mind when considering how to create and use a computer workstation, the top of the monitor should be about 2 to 3 inches above your eyes. You should not need to tilt or crane your neck to view the contents of the screen. There should be no glare or reflection on the screen. Ensure there is appropriate lighting to read the screen clearly at any time of day. And place any documents that you will be looking at as you type in a document holder in line with the monitor. When seated, comfortably position your arms so that your wrists are straight and flat and your arms are close to your body. Keep your feet flat on the floor and your thighs and forearms parallel to the floor. The keyboard should be in comfortable position so your arms are not straining to reach up or down to hit particular keys. When typing, try not to bend the wrist. If you, if you feel strain on the wrist, arm, or finger when using the traditional mouse, try switching to a trackball, a larger mouse, or considering using a device that uses touch technology. These guidelines also applies to notebook users, although an advantage of a notebook is the ability to take it with your anywhere, including the beach or in a vehicle. If you plan to put the Facebook or if you, if you plan to put the notebook on your lap, ensure you are sitting appropriately as described in the guidelines. And where possible, you a tray, you a tray or something sturdy to place the notebook on your work. This will ensure a flat surface for the notebook as well as reduce the amount of heat generated by the notebook on your lap. It is to your advantage to consider ergonomics when you work with a computing device for long stretches of time. Even with a portable device, think of how you are sitting and use the device as well as getting up periodically to stretch your muscles. Strains on your body can lead to more than just physical pain, but also lead to a reduction in mental alertness, low productivity errors in your work, or absences from work or school from physical ailments. This will be my references. CCI Learning Solutions, Avanti M Basic Office Application and Bill Publishing, Avanti M ICT Empowerment Image Application, Unlimited Books, 
And before I end, I just want to give you the lesson summary. In this lesson, you learn about your online identity and how to protect it. You also learn about the adverse effects prolonged computing can have on your health. And you should now be able to describe the purpose of blogs, forums, and wikis. Understand the function of social media networks and how they work. Understand the difference between open and closed social networks. Describe how to use LinkedIn. Describe what constitutes your digital identity. Understand the importance of maintaining a good digital identity. Explain how to avoid cyberbullying. And understand the health risks that arise from prolonged computing. So that's it for today. Good luck and congratulations. You were able to finish living in the IT era, Module 1 to 17. Good luck and God bless.